Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today, we, in our tour of the meta, we're taking a look at mono white uh, humans. And this is a very, very straightforward deck. I mean, it plays very minimal spells. It's almost all creatures, and it's, uh, it looks very aggressive. It's it's even only running 22 lands. It's, it's that low to the ground. So let's take a look at what we have here. So in the one-drop slot, we have some of the best one-drops in all of Standard. We have four Hopeful Initiate. Four Recruitment Officer, which even if you're not using the activated ability, is still a Savannah Lion on one mana. And then we have three copies of Skrelb Defector Might. Skrelb is here, obviously, to protect all of your other creatures. Uh, then, in the two slot, we have four copies of the Copper Coat Vanguard, probably, probably one of the best cards to come out of Aftermath, giving each of your humans plus one, plus zero, oh, and ward one. I mean, that's really, really strong. Especially if you're putting a lot of pressure on the opponent in the early game, not giving them enough time to breathe, and not enough time to cast their spells and removal. It's not, they're not going to be able to keep up. Uh, aside from that, we have one copy of Guardian of New Benalia. Uh, this card, when this card first got, got revealed, I thought that this was going to be like one of those all over the place cards because it has such a crazy survivability in that you can discard a card to give it indestructible. But it turns out it didn't really um, become as prevalent as I thought. You still see it being played here and there, but it wasn't like a, a crazy, crazy card. But it, it is here in the uh, in the humans list. It is a human, of course, and it, uh, it does have some very, very good abilities. So it gets one slot. And then we have four copies of Intrepid Adversary. Uh, this is going to be uh, your team pumper, as well as getting you a little bit of life gain to, um, to sustain yourself in the mid game or to recover from a, uh, uh, an opposing aggro list. Uh, we've got two copies of Ossification. Um, also, I'm beginning to think that like, if you're playing white, you're playing Ossification at this point. The card is just so damn versatile. Uh, then we have uh, four copies of Talia, Guardian of Thraben. Uh, easily one of the best creatures that you can be playing if you are doing in an all-creature strategy, uh, especially in a metagame that is so reliant on removal and interacting with your opponent's spells having this on the table is going to really shore up your game plan against uh, other mid-range or control lists so that gets a four of then we have uh, four copies of brutal cathar um if you've been playing standard for any length of time you know how good this is so this gets a four copy include and then we have adeline resplendent cathar perfect card to uh, curve into on turn three um, especially if you happen to have a hopeful initiate on the table to begin begin the game with. And last stop, we have four copies of Knight Errant of Eos. Um, this is likely going to cost you like only a couple mana if you use it with its Convoke ability. You're never going to be casting it for five mana. And it being able to help you refill your hand as well is going to be really, really strong. Uh, but in case you didn't know what this card does, um, it is a 4-4 four, four for 5 with Convoke. So Convoke means um, you can tap as many creatures as you want to to pay for one colorless of this spell's casting cost. So if you have three other creatures on the table at the time of casting this, this is only going to cost you two if you tap three creatures. And it says when Knight Errant of Eos enters the battlefield, look up at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal up to two of them with mana value X or less from among them where X is the number of creatures that convoked Knight Errant of Eos, put the reveal cards into your hand, then shuffle. So she is a very good um, uh, replenishment card for the, the later in the game. And then you have your 22 lands, which are 21 planes and a single Igonjo Seat of the Empire. I imagine they're only going with a single Igonjo um, to minimize the chance of drawing more than one Igonjo and being stuck with a dead card in your hand. So, yeah, this is the list, Mono White Humans. Let's uh, take it out onto the ladder and see how it do. Okay, what do we have here? So we have a single Igonjo and a Plains. That all of my hand is requiring th at least three mana. So I think we're going to mulligan this. Okay, that's a little bit better. So three land, Recruitment Officer, Guardian, Talia, Brutal Cathar. We'll keep six and send one Plains back. And hopefully we'll draw another Plains by the time we get to our third turn. So we'll start here with the recruitment officer.
Okay, so we're playing against an Esper deck. Probably an Esper control style deck. So let's come out with the Talia first and see what they do. Siphon Insight. Interesting choice. Maybe trying to dig up my other ossification to deal with Talia. I've been seeing a lot more people playing Siphon Insight lately. I wonder why. I mean, it's a decent card, but like out of nowhere, like suddenly everyone's playing it. Crash in for two. Okay, he just took my recruitment officer. <laughs> That's honestly really silly. Alright, let's go here. And let's go with Copper Coat Vanguard. And then we'll crash in with this guy right here. Down to 15. Let's go here. Do we want to play the Brutal Cathar on a recruitment officer? It's like, I'm, I don't know. I guess we might as well. I mean, we don't really have any other really good plays at the moment. Well, that dropped in immediately, which tells me he's not really holding anything up right now. So let's attack in. Alright, puts him down to seven. That does sound like a pretty perfect day. I mean, having having a, a Lord of the Rings marathon on like your second monitor or like your TV while you're uh, just jamming games. Honestly, say that I I would not be upset by that. I actually recently watched um, Fellowship, and like like you. If you don't watch the, those movies for a long for a long period of time, you, you kind of forget just how long those ones are, especially with the like the extended cuts. And, and but not just that, but like just how damn good they are. It's like it's like I I heard Lord of the Rings on uh, like the the original trilogy referred to as like the the Star Wars for millennials. It's like it's it's just it's just like one of those like once a generation trilogies to come along. And honestly, I, I kind of agree with it. Like, I, of like any other like trilogy or like like major event movie to like come along since then, like, still none of them really hold a candle to uh, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. And like, and those movies like they still hold up. Like, those movies came out in like the early early two thousands, like over like almost twenty years ago. And those movies still hold up. It's like you, you just you just sit down, and you watch those movies, and it's not just cozy nostalgia; it's just damn good movies. <laughs> All right, so what do we have here? We have a couple of planes, a recruitment officer, and intrepid adversary that we can play, and an Adeline that we really want to curve into. So let's see if this game gets there. If my opponent decides he wants to play the game, of course. All right. Planes into Recruitment Officer. Go, go, Savannah Lion. Ah. <sighs> Are you there? I really hope we don't have like an absentee player here. Okay, there we go. All right, we got a little bit of action. Go and play the intrepid adversary. Beat in for two. I'm really hoping to get a planes in this next poll. Okay, so this is we're playing against Esper Legends here.
What is your choice? I don't think you want to attack with Skrelv. Alright, it's past his attack phase. What are you holding me up for? Okay, no, uh... No third land, but a copper coat can work. Don't know what you're holding me up for, though. You're taking way longer than you should. Swing in. Okay, blocks there. Good. Hmm. If I get another land, I could also play the Knight Errant of Eos next turn if I wanted to. But I think I want to play Adelaine. Apply some pressure. Alright. Not casting anything. But still taking forever to take his turns. All right, there's a land. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and play Brutal Cathar. See if he lets it land. I'm playing this one out first because I would honestly rather he um, wastes his counter magic on a Brutal Cathar than an Adelaine. So Cathar is just going to get Skrelv out of the way. Okay, perfect. That's what I wanted to see. All right, beat in for not for. Five more, he goes down to nine. And depending on what he does this turn, will determine whether or not we try to go for the kill next turn. Well, either way, it's not going to be a kill shot next turn, but it'll be closer. Okay. Right, he beats in for one, and he applies one toxic. All right, we got another land. Let's go ahead and come in with the Adeline. See if it lands. What you gonna do? I have a feeling he's trying to hold up his mana for an emperor. Okay, no, he's gonna counter it. Good choice. And now we will attack. Okay, go for the throw. That's fine. All right, you take two. Take one from Skrull. You're down to two cards left in your hand. Let's see what you could possibly have for me. All right. Well, let's start. Let's start with Talia. See if you try to counter it. No? Okay. Um, in that case, we will attack and see what you do. I'm tempted to tap out and try to cast Knight Errant, Knight Errant of Eos. I don't know what he could possibly do to stop me. But he's not playing a whole lot of creatures this game, so maybe he just has a bad draw. But I'm also kind of expecting like a, um, a board wipe to come my way as well. Okay. Um, well, he's not going to be blocking at all, so let's try to play the Adelaine. Alright, I am expecting an Emperor, so let's see if he plays the Emperor. Oh, no, Adawara. Interesting. 
I did save him a turn, though. I was expecting that to be the Emperor. Um, why'd you do that? Did you not understand the scrub was a, a legendary? Okay, no, he's just he's just casting stuff out of his hand for funsies. All right, Adeline comes in. And so do we. Pink, pink, pink. I think that was just a case of like a really bad draw for him. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have three planes, one Skrell, a, couple, a copper coat, and a pair of Adelines. So it looks fairly decent. Let's see how we do. Hit him with the hello. Okay, I mean, just drew an intrepid adversary. That's pretty decent. Let's drop that down. So, overground, so that tells me that he's playing enchantments. Or maybe even um, Selesnia Toxic. Oh, he does not want that scroll on the table at all. Can't say I blame you, dude. Uh, let's see. Let's go with the Intrepid Adversary to start. Dependent on what they cast next turn, I will play either Adeline or Coppercoat Coat Vanguard. Actually, either Adeline or Brutal Cathar. Order House Novelties. <laughs> That's an interesting name. Okay. Topiary Stopper. Oh, is he playing Domain? He could very well be playing Domain. Okay. Well, since he doesn't have anything to block with, what we'll do is we'll drop the Adeline right now. And we're just going to start beating in. Thankfully, Topiary can't block until they have seven lands out. Oh, but he might have seven lands now if he plays another land from his hand. He's got four, five, six. No land from hand, though. That's fine. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and drop the Copper Coat and do as much damage as we can right now. There you go. He goes down to two. Um... I don't want to cast Skrelv yet because I don't want to overextend because he might have a board wipe right now. Leyline Binding. Not a board wipe. Okay. He pays for it. Plays another Topiary to get the extra land so he can activate his guys. So he'll be able to block two, so he'll likely block this and this, still allowing four to come in. Oh, you want to go get that guy, huh? Uh, no. I don't think so. Because now we will play uh, Cathar to get rid of your blocker. Which is going to allow us to just beat in. That's right, because you can only block one guy now. Nice try. Okay. Planes, planes. We got four one drops. All right, sure. Keep it. All right, let's go with the planes to start. And we'll go with a Skrelv. I want to get that summoning sickness over with. All right, swap. All right, got another planes. Let's go with... Uh, recruitment officer and hopeful initiate. No attacks. End turn. Would have really liked to have like an uh, a Talia right there. Okay, we lost the old chorus coming in. Alright, my turn. Let's go and play another land. And then we'll put. Mm, do we want the ossification? I kind of want to use the ossification on a better card. So let's attack with this. Hope we'll get to plus one. Yeah, so he'll block there. Gets two through. I'll play another recruitment officer and end the turn. Okay, so this is some kind of Mardu deck. Uh, yeah, my turn. 
All right, let's go ahead and play the copper coat. And then we will attack with those two. Think, think. And end the turn. I want to keep the Igonjo up in case I need to kill a blocker. Like that. Resolve. I think we're actually just going to use uh, ossification on that one. All right, my turn. Um, so okay, so we are going to cast the Igonjo now. I'm just going to target that land, gobble up at sushi, and he says no, thank you. I was a little disappointed with the uh, the battle pass this time around. It's like, yeah, granted, you you do still get like all the usual um, uh, packs and um, and cosmetics, but the like the cosmetic track, like the mastery track for this time around, was honestly really disappointing. I think it was Mardu Dragons. Yeah, it could it could be. I have not seen uh, Mardu Dragons yet. I've seen a lot of Jeskai Dragons, but not Mardu Dragons. All right, let's see what we got here. We've got three lands, one of which is an Igonjo. We've got a Copper Coat, an Intrepid Adversary, a Blue Cathar, and a Knight of Eos. I'm surprised we don't have any one drops, but honestly, the quality of creatures is pretty good, so we'll keep it. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. We're up against Mono Blue, maybe. If he drops a second island, we will know for certain. Or if he plays, consider. Yep. He might want to consider his options. Yeah, this is Mono Blue. Mono Blue is the only deck that plays full of knowledge. Alrighty. Fuckface. <laughs> okay, so. I don't want to play Talia into open mana, so I guess we'll play Copperco into open mana. Wow, it landed, I'm surprised. Alright, plays Impulse. Three lands, I'll play an extra land as well. And this turn, we will attack first and see what they do. Okay. And we will follow up with an intrepid adversary. Will they, won't they? Will they, won't they? They will. You, you get rid of your counter spells now. Okay, so we're up to four. So let's try and play Atalia. Moment of truth. Okay, so they're, they're trying to find the right counter spell. Which in this moment is probably yes and scatter. Got a ray. Okay, that works. All right, attack. Goes the Telerian Terror. Not good for me. That has a ward cost of two, but we do have this. Let's see if they let me cast it unfettered. I wouldn't if I were them. Just because the the ward costs some Tolarian terror. Okay, I cast moment of truth, but that's uh not enough. So he's probably at this moment he's probably looking for fading hope, so he can just um, bounce it. And yes, we choose that and we auto pay for it. Suck it in. Attack. Okay. I was hoping he would forget about the, the ward on the Brutal Cathar and just try to cast Fading Hope right there. Wow, a lot of Moment of Truth. I mean, I like Moment of Truth. I actually like Moment of Truth over Impulse in this deck, just because it gets more uh, instance into the graveyard. Okay. Um, we'll play another Copper Coat.
What you long do? There's the fading hope. Okay. I figured you'd be doing something silly like that. Copper coat comes in. Um, in this case, we'll play the Knight Errant of Eos, and we will convoke for five. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Doot, doot. We'll auto pay for the rest, and we will grab a Skrelv and a Recruitment Officer. And then we'll play... Actually, no. Do you want to play that? <laughs> we'll play the Igonjo now, so that we can play the, the Skrelv now, and hopefully um, start um, attacking freely next turn. Alright. He taps out for Flow of Knowledge. Interesting choice. And does he have the one island to play? Because if he has an island to play, then he can hold up some, some kind of mana for a combat trick or something. Yeah, he did. Oh, and he just taps out for another Tolarian Terror. Okay. Not the choice I would have made. But I'm also not him, so... Let's start by playing the Brutal Cathar. We will target this. Yes. We'll pay the two. And now we will pay two life to give this protection from blue. Or quasi protection from blue, at least. And then next, we will attack. Bink. And then we will play another recruitment officer. And next turn, we will just go all out and just swing for the fences. Okay, he plays his Haughty Jin. Big boy. Too bad he can't fling it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So if he swings in, he can he can put me down to 13. Because I don't think I would block in this situation. I would just swing for the fences next turn. Because he did unless he has like some kind of like um unless he has like like uh March of Swirling Mist to uh swirl out like my my key creatures, he's not gonna win this turn. Let's see what he does. What you doing, bud? You got a plan over there? He's roping. Rope, 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 rope. I know you're over there thinking. You gotta, you gotta be doing something. Okay, he does have March Swing Miss. That's what I thought. Okay, he's the extra. Um, did you think that it was gonna keep them swirled out until your turn? I'm thinking that's what he thought. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was he was hoping to keep it to keep them gone until my next turn and then swinging for a victory. 